All right, Ian, take it away. Awesome. Thanks, Grant. All right, hey, everyone. Um, my name is Ian Ballou. I'm a developer uh, on the satellite team at Red Hat. Um, so I'm going to be talking a bit about some future integrations between Pulp and Catello. Um, and joined along with me, we've got my colleagues Partha and Samir. They'll be talking about some features that they're working on that also relate to Pulp. So the idea really of this talk, we're not going to go into like crazy technical details. It's really to spark some inspiration because for each of these, we have questions that maybe Pulp could help out in the future or at least some kind of joined effort to solve some interesting problems that we have. So just for kind of a bit of a catch up for people who don't know so much about our ecosystem. Um, so the piece of software that I'm talking about today, um, namely our Foreman, which is um, a, a host management tool, I guess an IT automation tool, you could say, um, for provisioning machines, monitoring them, and configuring them. Um, and what I work on specifically, and what we all, my colleagues work on, is a plug into it called Catello. Um, and Catello brings content management with an integration with Pulp and Candlepin, namely, uh, where Pulp brings uh, the content to the hosts that need patching, and then Candlepin uh, works with uh, access management to this content. Um, and together, this creates a web application where you can manage machines in your infrastructure. Um, you can provision them, you can monitor them, figure them, like I said. And then also, Pulp brings the wonderful magic of making sure these machines are patched and that they have the proper content on them. And here's the lovely, I've already mentioned these three words two times, but <laughs> this is what Foreman does. And so we've got a few features that I wanted to talk about coming up um, that I think are pretty interesting and that have had um, some demand. So this first feature and uh, the previous presentation really went over this nicely, so everyone's a bit warmed up, is relating to these boot C image mode hosts. And so I don't need to go over the greedy details now because Lubash went over them nicely before. But with the rise of these hosts, there's essentially going to be a new host type in Foreman and Catello setups. Um, these hosts are completely different. You don't just update them with a DNF update. You have to swap the container image. Um, and they have a whole new type of provisioning. So it means we, have a, we need not entirely new, but a decently new uh, user workflow for these machines. Um, as mentioned before, for anyone who wasn't in the previous presentation, these uh, Bootsy image mode machines are essentially OS tree style hosts that are powered by container images. Some things that we're going to have to do differently, um, since all the upgrades happen through the new Bootsy command, um, we're going to need special remote execution workflows so that from our web server, you can go out and tell all of your hosts to upgrade or you can tell all of your hosts to switch to some other container image. Um, you can tell them to roll back. And then you can also see this information as well. Um, and let's see. We also need to be able to differentiate between these host types, um, which is important so that you're not trying to do the exact same management on these image mode machines that you would do on um, an ordinary virtual machine. Um, and then, yeah, also expanded provisioning support. Um, so these, when you're provisioning these machines, as you saw in the demo before, you'll need to either provide an image, or um, if you're doing Kickstart, you can provide the container, uh, the path to the container image in your Kickstart file, and that will create this nice bootable machine for you too. So you don't necessarily have to uh, build the image um, like you saw before into like a, a disk. And provision it from there, you can actually just do it right in Kickstart, which is nice. So I guess some info really about how Pulp helps power this feature. Um, I mean, namely, the most obvious thing, the entire, well, not the entire demo that was shown before, because building container images isn't in our scope quite yet. 
However, managing them is completely done by pulp. Um, I don't know if any of y'all saw my presentation last year about our container registry, but we have a proxy on top of pulp's container registry since Catello has special permissions. Um, we don't use pulp do domains, um, but so pulp manages the bootable images. And then also the pulp API tells us valuable information about what's in the registry. Um, one thing that's really valuable about having the registry in, in your data center is because we can index information about which manifests, which repositories are synced in pulp, we can provide better functionality. So at a base level, we can tell which content is bootable or not. If you're looking through your UI, you'll, you can see, or you will be able to see that you know, a certain manifest, certain image is bootable, or maybe some other type. Um, and speaking of future integrations, um, you can even start to tell which images are stale. So if you have a host that's consuming from, let's say it's like CentOS boot C using the stream nine tag, um, and that tag gets updated, you could potentially tell that the image on the host is stale because you can take the digest um, of the image that the host is running on and compare it to the digest of the latest synced um, CentOS boot C repo at the stream nine tag. And if they're mismatched, then your host will need an update and you can run the boot C upgrade and then you'll get updated. Um, and also just like any other host, you'll be able to see if like RPMs need upgrading or even if errata apply. Uh, however, actually fixing that will be this container image swap rather than just running like a DNF update, like I said before. Now, another big thing, um, this is still early in the talk, so we don't know uh, if this is a path we're going to go down, but a good user story could potentially be building these container images with Pulp's powers that Lubash showed um, before, because if these hosts need an update, what are you going to do? You're supposed to go and build a new container image. So what an interesting user workflow would be, you push that contain your container file to Pulp through um, Catello, you provision your machines using those images that you build. Now you see in our UI, hey, there's a critical you know, CVE that applies to this host. Great, you just push you know, your container file if you need an update one, or you just rebuild your image with the newer content, and then you reprovision it, or not even reprovision it, you just do a boot C switch, or even just a boot C upgrade if it's the same tag, and then your host will be updated. So that could be a very nice user workflow. OK, so I've talked enough about Boot C. There's some more exciting container-related features here. And uh, another thing that we have in the pipeline is supporting delivery of OCI flat packs. And uh, my colleague, Samir, will talk a bit more about this. Hey, thanks, Ian. Uh, let me take over the presentation and share my screen. Give me a second. All right, let's see. So let me start the slideshow. So I'm going to talk about how we are trying to implement Flatpak support inside of Catello. So a couple of things to know about that. So first thing is Pulp Container is the plugin that supports OCI Flatpaks today. So I have a link to this documentation here. And so basically what we have is an index for flat packs, which the flat pack clients can point to. And when these flat pack repositories are synced, they're handled as any other container repository today by Pub. So what we want to do in Catalo is to integrate this support. Uh, and we have an RFC out for it. I have a link uh, here. So what we are trying to do is to leverage this flat pack support in Pulp and make it easier, easier for users to consume them inside of Catalog. So one major point for that is we want to mirror any given flat pack index. And to begin with, we'll be supporting these two, Red Hat Registry and Fedora Registry. So what that means is if I go to this, uh, flat pack index, 
you'll see this is the Red Hat Flatpak Index, for example. And it has a bunch of repositories pointing to certain images based on their architecture, etc. So what we want to do is to provide the user the ability to point to this remote and be able to mirror all of these repositories. Uh, but when I say mirror these repositories, these uh, repositories are not technically pulp repositories yet. So these are just artifacts that point to these remote repositories. And once we have that data inside of Ketelo, we want to give user the flexibility to create whichever repository they select. So given that, they can enable sort of any of these repositories. And I talked about pulp support for index.json. So this is actually pulp core registry running this index at the static endpoint. So for example, in my test machine, I have some flat pack repositories sync. So you'll see this is the Ketelo flavor of the repositories. So we have these scoped by organization. This is the repository itself. And then this is the container repository here, real line flat pack. Uh, we also have a similar representation for content views. So if you see, this is content view in default organization. Dev here is my uh, environment. Then I have the content view here, the repository, and then finally the container repository. So one catch here is, so we can have duplicate images in this list. So if you see this uh, content view representation of the repository has its own images, and the library version will have its own images and both can be the same or both can be different. So today, pulp core registry, the Flatpak index, will serve all of the Flatpak repository it knows about. Uh, the authorization for these repositories is managed by Ketelo today. So that is one support that we need to add. So if a client that is registered to a particular content view tries to access a repository, we we allow it to access repositories that it is subscribed to. So uh, that is part of the RFC. It's uh, all still under development. Uh, so I talked about uh, there's also authentication bits. So when you try to sync repositories from, say, Red Hat registry, you need authentication and everything. So all of that will be set up by Ketelo. Uh, we will do the remote introspection. Uh, so this is basically scanning the remote, the flat pack index, and bringing down those uh, repositories, uh, the representation of the repositories into Ketelo. So then you can play with those repositories inside of Ketelo, uh, create pulp repositories, et cetera. Uh, the next goal is to be able to manage lifecycle of repositories, so allow only access to whatever environment the client is subscribed to. That also includes access management, et cetera. Uh, so uh, Ian referred to the container registry that Ketelo has. So something that is coming up as part of Flatpak is also a Flatpak index registry proxy. So we will be proxying all the requests that the client sends, uh, filtering all those uh, results based on what the client has access to and then return the results based on pulp course flat pack to the client. So that is the current plan. Uh, one immediate limitation here is we are not supporting OST flat packs, which is the base of flathub.org. Uh, this will only support OCI. Uh, and uh, one more interesting note here is uh, our customers tend to have a lot of content view in a lot of environments. And as you can see, this flat pack index that we created from Catello in pulp has representations for all of them. So there's a scope for this index itself to get very large. And then we have our own proxy, which will be filtering this large data based on uh, client access. So those are some considerations we are still working out. Uh, but 
yeah, I think this is all I had here. Let me see what slides we have. Yeah, so one of the challenges uh, we are trying to solve is lifecycle management, because that is the one thing that Ketalo does for customers. Uh, all right, I think that was all for me. I can hand it over to Partha to talk uh -huh. about replication. Awesome. Uh, can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Oh. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there's more like a teaser, like things people are asking us and like something Pulp can help us with, maybe uh, to improve those process and figure out things we can do together. So I just want to just, uh, we call it HA, but much more, mostly about replication stuff. So if I had two Foreman servers, uh, and I, I'm trying to figure out what are the different ways I can replicate data between them. Uh, one of the things is like, we have to think in terms of, you know, hey, how are the two servers even communicating with each other? How are, what is the status quo today? So this slide is more of that, like it's more about, so you, so you have two Foreman servers and they want to replicate content. So the Foreman servers either can I, I can both, uh, they, they can both talk to CDN, but they have their own local CDN. So like some of these uh, companies, they have like all these geographic restrictions saying, you know, we want the local CDN mirror and not the American one. Uh, so the idea here is, so we, we need to be able to support replication of repositories and distributions in that kind of a scenario. They talk, so it's kind of like, a, they talk to three, two different ACSs. Uh, There's the there's again the second one uh, second one sounds sounds similar but uh, this yeah so the first one was first one was the one that's there today you can just you point to the same CDN and you want to sync and you want to replicate this second one is the ACS one where I have two different CDNs but I want still to replicate the same content view definitions uh, third way two Foreman servers can talk to each other is like what we call the disconnected scenarios, uh, disconnected and air gap. Uh, so here there's an upstream Foreman server which points to CDN, so it syncs content from there. And the downstream server can only talk to the upstream Foreman server. Uh, so what happens here is, uh, so the downstream does not have, it's inside an intranet and doesn't have access to the CDN. Uh, so it can only pull in from the upstream Foreman server. Uh, so that's that's what that's it's part of uh, one of the use cases. And the uh, final and that the other way we have is we have called one what is an air gap network. So like secure installations. You have an upstream server that has access to the CDN and it pulls in whatever is needed. Then we then we go through the export import process. To copy this over to uh, copy the content from the upstream Foreman server to the downstream. Uh, so that is called air gap. Can you, next slide. So what what we are noticing is a lot of customers in any of these each of the scenarios they want. They want replication of two important fees. They want they want the content view stuff replicated, and they want they want things like the repositories uh, replicated. Uh, like they they want it to be identical. Uh, so right right now we don't have any support. We we only have import and export. If they if they want replication, that's the only thing they can do right now. They can export. A content view and it'll get version and it'll get all the information, all the repositories in a huge dump, and they can import it into their internal server. But uh, yeah, but the issue there is uh, yeah, the issue there is that the import and export like you know, involves co again exporting things, copying data manually, and the import export process is there it doesn't copy certain configurations uh so things like we are not we are not replicating environments and things like that but that's a different thing uh, 
Next slide, please. So this is more about like, what are some of the capabilities we need for application? As I said, the geographic CDN case, we want to replicate the repo data and versions, but pull in from a local CDN mirror, that's one. Uh, yeah, and we need that. We can, we, we can, we don't, so we need a, we need a probably a better export import idea here where we can just export the metadata, not necessarily the artifacts. I don't know how far fetched or it, that is, but the idea, idea would be at least so that they can replicate uh, two repositories and even their versions if possible. So the, uh, yeah, the main, Main point, main thing we're trying to replicate here is repository versions, distributions, uh, and products. Mm, yeah, it, it was just a teaser, but that's pretty much all. I had to just start a discussion on, you know, where we can, where how can, how can help us kind of thing. Next, next slide. Uh, Ian, um, you want to proceed? Yeah, I got it. Thanks, Partha. Yeah, so I'll just wrap this up here. Um, yeah, so we can see a lot of this stuff that we're talking about is container related. Um, I mean, heck, even the HA uh, replication that Partha was talking about is even container related because, you know, imagine users do want to import their metadata, but they want it to be synced like with an alternate content source, you know, grab this content from another CDN. That, that wouldn't be possible today with container content since um, there is an ACS support. So they would be forced to do a normal import export. So they would have to have the burden of carrying that content rather than trying to, you know, download it from some other CDN. And that might be, um, that might be fine, but it's just interesting that it all, I don't know, it all carries kind of a container theme. But along that theme, um, we are also planning on doing some container UI improvements. We're really trying to revamp our registry to match or exceed an experience like you would see on like Quay.io. Um, and Pulp is helping to power this because they're giving us lovely information now, like image size, architecture, OS information, and we already have labels, annotations, and the type, bootable or flat pack or, or more. Um, so anyway, we'll be able to display all that great information that Pulp is gripping from the, uh, the image data. Um, but yeah, this is all coming along soon. Um, we'd love to hear if you all have any suggestions. We'll certainly be in touch with how we are implementing these features. Um, but these are just some of the some of the future problems that, uh, if we solve them, will bring a lot of value to our users. Um, and I think that was it. So yeah, thanks for listening. Um, and I think we used up all our time. But if you have any questions, uh, you can always find us on on Matrix. Outstanding, folks. That's two talks in a row that have come in exactly on time. I can't tell you how impressive that is. Uh, I'm going to stop this recording. Hang on a moment.